can use them if you have a chronic illness to help with renewing the brain, the heart, the immune system, your mitochondria. We're in a deep shift now in medicine from this reductionist disease-based medicine to a systems-based view, which is more of an ecosystem view of medicine, an ecosystem view of health and disease. And it's pushing medicine towards a future that allows us to treat disease and reverse biological aging using both nature's intelligence and our body's own innate systems to repair, heal, and renew. Our bodies have an innate healing system. We just have to learn how to activate it. Like when you cut your skin, how does it heal? Well, you don't go, oh, I want you to heal skin, or you don't have to go buy new skin and put it over top. Your body has this mechanism for repair and renewal and re rebuilding and healing. We just have to learn how to activate it. And this is all made possible through this new field of longevity innovations and longevity science. And that's what today's Health Bites all about. So let's get into them. The first one you probably heard about, and this is this is still a little bit on the future horizon, but it's, it's coming fast, is stem cells. Now, one of the things that happens as we age is our stem cells get pooped out. It's called stem cell exhaustion. It's one of the hallmarks of aging we talked about. And our stem cells age as we age. So their ability to regenerate tissues, cells, to repair, heal our bodies, just kind of declines a little bit. So emerging science tells us that we now can start to use stem cells as a therapy for degenerative conditions, whether it's arthritis or broken down joints. Uh, and this is being used in sports medicine for athletes. It's being used uh, in, in longevity medicine. So it's, it's starting to happen. I think the question is, you know, how do we how do we get more of this? And I think the more research we do on this, the more it becomes acceptable, the more we'll be able to sort of innovate around this. Right now, these stem cells are a little challenging to get because you can't grow your own stem cells and give them to yourselves in America. You have to kind of go to a different country right now. It's because of the regulatory environment, but I think that'll change. But I want you to think of your stem cells as sort of the memory of your youth. They have the capacity to renew, to repair, regenerate cells. And they also secrete factors that regulate the immune system, that reduce inflammation. They stimulate healing throughout the body. And they produce these things called exosomes. We're going to talk about those in a little bit. But these are like little packets of healing factors that contain proteins and peptides and microRNA, all these things that teach your body what to do to repair and heal. Now, uh, studies have shown that stem cell therapy and exosome therapy can reduce inflammation that's associated with aging and also increase energy, physical performance, uh, and it's just moving so fast. So let's just talk about the kind of stem cells, what it can help with, and what, what might be on the horizon. So really two major types. The first is from your bone marrow. We talked about that a little bit. They're called hemopoietic stem cells. They make red blood cells, white cells, and then there's the mesenchymal stem cells, which come from our tissues, or mesenchyme, which is basically our, what we're made of. And, and these come from our organs and so forth, fat. Uh, and these can be harvested from bone marrow, if they're, they're the uh, hemopoietic stem cells or from uh, mesenchymal stem cells can come from fat or other places. And then they can be injected intravenously into your whole body for systemic healing or into particular body parts for repairing local uh, issues that are, that are broken down. Uh, and they won't be rejected by your immune system because they're immunoprotected because they're your own cells. Uh, now we're learning also, you may be able to get umbilical cord stem cells and placental stem cells. And there's all this kind of stuff that's, that's sort of happening on the horizon, but it's not quite ready for prime time. Now, why might you use them? Well, if you're a longevity biohacker, you might just want to get them injected in your bloodstream. Uh, you might want to use them if you have a chronic illness to help with uh, renewing the brain, the heart, the immune system, your mitochondria. They might help you improve the frailty of aging, uh, the loss of muscle mass, improvement in endurance, energy, organ function, all may be influenced by giving stem cells. Uh, we still need a lot of research. Uh, it's not quite prime time yet, but it's going to become a routine intervention in medicine and the treatment of uh, of abnormal aging. Okay, next topic, uh, exosomes. Exosomes we briefly touched on, but these are how stem cells do their work. They have these little packets of repair, regenerative healing factors, and they actually can be given in a much easier way. You don't have to suck out your bone marrow. You don't have to, uh, you know, get a liposuction to kind of draw them out, and you don't have to grow them in a lab. And you can actually get them from um, either amniotic fluid or from placental fluids, uh, placental material stem cells that are then grown in a lab and then heart, and then they can be grown in, in a way that's very sterile and clean and safe. And they're immune, they, they can be extracted and there's no DNA in them. So they're not identified as foreign. Your body can handle them and they actually don't get rejected. 
So they're really kind of cool. Uh, they're, they're little, as I said, little packets of growth factors, inflammatory, uh, anti-inflammatory compounds, lipids, proteins, uh, little micro DNA, RNA, uh, and they basically are powerful therapeutic agents for regenerative medicine. I've used them personally uh, to heal back problems after COVID when I had brain fog, and they've been quite remarkable. I, I had uh, inflammatory bowel disease after an infection with clostridia, dif difficile, where I got colitis, and I used it to cure that. So I, I think there's, there's a lot of research emerging around this. We still need more research, but these exosomes are quite amazing. Um, they act like as little messengers and communication systems between cells. They reduce inflammation. They cross your blood-brain barrier. That's why my brain fog went away when I basically took them after COVID. They also improve muscle and brain function. They regulate cellular cleanup, repair. They help with autophagy. They play a role in regulating um, potentially autoimmune diseases, obesity, lots of things, infections. Um, and they can also help regenerate bone, cartilage, soft tissues, heart, brain. So I've had them inject into my back where I had terrible arthritis and pain and it's just gone so it's pretty amazing stuff it's a little expensive it's not available for prime time for most people yet but it's it's really impressive i've used them as i said to cure my own autoimmune issues uh from my back um i mentioned the, the covid with brain fog fatigue depression and basically without with just one treatment it all went away so um, now, I, I, I've used this with many patients, not just myself, and I found for, for tough cases, it can be extremely effective, and it's, it's very safe, and it's a lot cheaper than stem cells. So um, how, how are they made? You know, where do they come from? Well, we talked a little bit about that, but they're from the um, stem cells that are grown in a lab that come from placenta and uh, or maybe from amniotic fluid and then they're cultured in a lab and then the exosomes are basically extracted they're concentrated and they're made available for treatment so while you might only be growing you know a few hundred million stem cells if you extract them from your bone marrow or your your fat you might be get billions and billions of exosomes that can be given in, in ways shortcutting that whole process a lot of Clinics offer this for chronic diseases. A lot of clinics offer it for longevity. Uh, they can be given intravenously. Um, um, and uh, we found them very helpful in our clinical practice at the Ultra Wellness Center. And they, they really, they're they really pretty simple to give, just a simple IV push. Uh, we for sure need more research. Uh, you know, We need research on what conditions they work best for, uh, how effective they are, any risks are there. But many, many aging biohackers, including myself, are using them to, to really enhance their health and treat issues. Um, next topic, peptides. You might have heard about peptides. Ozempic is a peptide. Insulin is a peptide. Uh, and these are things that our body makes, these small little short mini proteins. Uh, and... And as we as as we age, the number on the function of these proteins decline. These many proteins called peptides, but they're hugely involved in a, a regula regulating so many things. Uh, thousands and thousands of them are produced by the body. Uh, 150 are being researched for medical applications. Over 80 of them are already approved by the FDA for medical therapies. Uh, they're synthesized in the lab and they're very safe. Uh, uh, of course, they have to be used, you know, in the right way. But it's really quite quite impressive uh, what these little things can do. I've had injuries, for example, in my shoulder. Uh, I just injected a little peptide in there called BP157. And it's like, <laughs> rather than suffering for weeks of rehab and pain, it goes away and I'm back, back in gear the next day. Um, it really can be used for all sorts of things from, uh, like I said, musculoskeletal he healing, injury, to boost hormone levels, uh, sex drive, uh, help with the immune system, fight infections, help with gut healing, improve tissue repair, building muscle mass, regulating hormones like growth hormone, um, improving cognitive function, memory, mitochondrial function. Uh, they improve sleep, increase energy level, stamina, strength, lower blood pressure, and just do so many, many things, even stimulate hair growth. Uh, they're being used as therapeutic agents by traditional doctors, by functional medicine, by regenerative doctors, and they're pretty well tolerated. Uh, they're many proteins. They would be digested if you actually ate them or took them as a pill. So they have to be given by sub-Q injection like insulin, but there may be uh, in nasal injections, I mean, nasal sprays or sub sublingual under the tongue or even implantable peptides. So we're learning more and more every day. Now, I found, again, found them very helpful for myself and for my patients. They've helped my immune system, recover from COVID, help my sleep, uh, sexual function, help from all kinds of injuries. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm super a big fan of peptides. Um, you should try to find a reputable 
uh, source. I mean, it's it's increasingly hard to do that because of regulatory issues. But you you know you can go to the International Peptide Society website to get a certified medical practitioner. Uh, again, as I mentioned, some of these are actually pharmaceuticals like Ozempic. So very powerful. Uh, the next field that I want to talk about is regenerative medicine. So this is like kind of a sister or brother to functional medicine, uh, and it has to do with using the these various compounds that come from our body that are often extracted or synthesized and then given back to the body in higher amounts like exosomes or peptides or um, stem cells or placental matrix uh, from placental healing factors. And they can use to help be help regenerate um, kind of broken body parts. So if you need to go to the body shop, literally the body shop, these compounds can be very helpful. So I've had lots of injuries. I'm very active. I had back surgery at 32. I ruptured a disc. Uh, you know, I've had chronic low back pain from arthritis. I managed it with yoga and massage, but I really bad arthritis and degenerative scoliosis in my low back. It doesn't stop me, but um, I basically kind of struggle with a lot of discomfort and pain. And at 60, I had another disc injury, another surgery, I had complications, bleeding in my spinal cord. I couldn't barely walk. And I decided to try regenerative medicine. I went to see my friend, Dr. Matt Cook at Bio Recent Medical, and he did all this stuff to me that kind of blew my mind and, and regenerated my body. He injected placental matrix. He put exosomes up my spinal canal. He uh, helped tissue repair through that. He used... Um, various kinds of uh, peptides and, and basically use a technique called hydrodissection where he kind of separated fascia and nerves and muscle and all stuck together. It was causing pain. And uh, uh, I'm pretty much pain-free now and stronger than ever. And uh, collectively, these therapies that, that, that he uses and others use are called regenerative medicine. And they're being used to treat chronic pain injury with amazing success. Uh, a lot of athletes use this. Uh, you know, they get way ahead of the game because they're they depend on being functional and, and, and high performance. Um, they're not available for most people yet, but they will be soon. And there are regenerative medicine clinics around the country that are growing. And it's going to be an important part of orthopedic pain management. So that those are the kind of cool longevity innovations that are on the horizon. There's many more, but uh, it, it's it's kind of exciting to see what's happening. It's basically using these the body's own intelligence and own healing factors to do the repair instead of drugs. And combining that with a healthy lifestyle, with diet, exercise, um, it, it, it can really help your body get in a younger state and reverse your biological age. Um, if you want to go to the next level, if you're an extreme biohacker, if you have you know, the resources, it might be worth exploring some of this, this stuff. I, I think the research still needs to come in a little bit more. It's quite expensive to date. But uh, I think it's going to come down just like, you know, I had a computer that was $3,500. My first computer had four megabytes of hard drive and one megabyte of RAM. And now, I, you know, I can get that for pennies today. So I think this is going to happen in healthcare. It probably will be covered by insurance at some point. But it's a very exciting frontier. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. Make sure you're thinking about your food as medicine. And we'll talk about what that means. And also personalize your approach because we're all different. We're all different genetically, metabolically. We're different in terms of our preferences, our culture, what we like, what we don't like. 